Hey, this is Matthew. Uh, this will be a little bit of a different episode of Chewing the Brew, because I'm not going to talk about the beer in front of me. I already have. Um, instead, I'm going to be reliving a visit I had to the Oli Tap Room in downtown Olympia, Washington, and the three beers that I tried there. Uh, nice quiet morning. Got out and did a little bit of shopping and walking around and me time. And um, so I stopped at the Oli Tap Room. They had a selection of beers on, ha on tap, obviously, and I tried, like I said, three. And first off, the first one I tried at the recommendation of the, the tap man, I don't know, what are they, is that a bartender? I mean, it's not a bar, so call him the tap man, was the Sky City Pilsner by Via Beer, or V-I-A Beer, um, which I've not had a Via Beer before, and I have had several Pilsners, obviously. Uh, this was a, an interesting, it was, well, it was, it was tasty. And it was basic, and it was just what you want a Pilsner to be. It had a good deal of flavor. I liked it quite a bit. Um, coming from a tap, I found Pilsners tend to have a bit more of a kind of a floral or verdant character to them than uh, a canned Pilsner, which tends to be, in my experience, a little drier than the tapped version. Uh, and so this coming from the tap had that, that verdant, that green kind of herbal you know, note, and that was really pleasant. And it was a really nice, kind of a, a spicy maltiness that, that worked very nicely. And it was just all around as a great beer. You know, good things. You don't, you don't expect your, your socks to be knocked off by Pilsner. You expect to be able to sit back, enjoy the beer, and think about other things. And that was exactly what this beer was. It did a great job. The Sky City Pilsner by Via Beer. Next, I tried a... Um, a fruited sour called Berry Noir by Boulevard Brewing. Boulevard is known for some of their big um, rye beers, their big barrel aged beers, some collaborations, some pretty successful collaborations. Um, they are based out of Kansas, as I understand it, Boulevard Brewing is. And um, this one was very surprising. Generally, when I get a sour, I expect it to be dry um, almost an acerbic level of sourness and acidity, just like straight on tart acidity. And then it's the characteristics that surround that acidity that, that make the beer unique. This beer smelt like fruit punch almost, not, not straight on fruit punch, more like a, a berry punch to the nose. It had a really thick head that just hung on forever of super tiny bubbles, almost like a Almost like the nitrogen was, you know, sitting up on top of the beer. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Nitrogenation almost always just, um, um, well, whatever, it does. Anyways, it was a really thick, really small, fine bubbled head that hung around forever. And the beer smelled like, like blueberries and blackberry and raspberry punch. Um, very, very juicy smelling. And that carried over to the flavor with an interesting exception. And I talked about the tap man, about this. Um, it had this very interesting undercurrent of oats, cereal. I mean, it tasted like Cheerios. Like there, there was a, an essence eau de Cheerio, <laughs> an essence of Cheerios to the, to the kind of underlying the beer. So it clearly had an oat malt that the, the fruited sour was based on. So the, the grains were, I don't know if they were 100% oats, but it was certainly, the oats were present there. And it was these really like lightly toasted uh, Cheerio oats. And it wasn't unpleasant. It was unexpected and it, it was pretty good. Combined with the juiciness and kind of general sweetness of what I expected to be a far tartar beer. Um, I'm not sure if Noir which means dark or black is the right name for this beer. I would call it juice box, frankly. Um, and I said that on Instagram when I posted a comment about that, um, I'd call it a juice box sour and, or a berry juice box or something like that. Cause that's what it reminded me a really bright, tasty, you know, juicy, enjoyable, pleasant berry juice. That happens to be a tart beer. Um, pleasant beer wrongly named <laughs> um, which brings us to beer number three which was by far the most interesting of the three and that was nelson hose 
by Degard Brewing, which is also out of Oregon. Um, this is the first Degard beer I've had, and I enjoyed it quite a lot. But it was a it was a very very interesting beer, um, and I mean that in a good way. I enjoyed it a lot. It's a it's a you're going to be thinking about this beer. It could be um, it could be paired really nicely with a like a super rich dessert, uh, not dessert, not a dessert at all, um, with a super rich like a, a steak, a really nice juicy succulent steak. I think this beer would go great with, but it was a dry hopped wild ale. And the first thing I noticed when I had the glass was you stick your nose in and it smelled like juniper. Juniper? I mean, that's something you expect maybe for your for your gin, right? Your beef eater, your your you know Bombay Sapphire or something like that. And it really surprised me. This was a strongly herbal juniper, like pine needles, um, flavor to the nose of the beer. When I first drank it, the first flavor that came to mind, honestly, was tomato juice. And I think that was the combination of the acidity of the beer and the herbal character to it coming together. Later on, it wasn't really, I mean, it's not like, it's not like it was tomatoes all the way down, but that was a very interesting character. It was, and I'm, I'm not going to try to describe each individual flavor, like if I'm savoring it here in front of you, because I don't have the time to now to actually have it in my mouth and re-remember those specific tasting notes, but um, that herbal and a very funky, tart, wild ale um, character came together and produced a very interesting beer. Not at all unpleasant, definitely an interesting beer though. So a wild ale, it had this, this, this funkiness, it had this tartness, it had this herbal character, it had, uh, you know, the, the, the malts were kind of present, but they were definitely playing second fiddle to the, to the, um, the, the, the yeast notes here. This also was a barrel aged, so dry hopped and barrel aged which gave it some just really, really interesting and cool characteristics that I really enjoy. I would like to find a bottle of that and um, stick it up in my agent cabinet, maybe a bottle or four. <laughs> I understand Degard does a lot of wild ales. They kind of specialize in that and in barrel aged wild ales. Uh, so that's really, really kind of exciting to get a, an opportunity to try one of those. And I would be very interested interested to see how it does aging over the course of a few years. I think um, I think the flavors would develop very interestingly. It I mean it could go either of two directions. It could become more tart. I'm not sure if that would be what I'd want for that beer, or it could kind of mellow out and become more generally um, more focused on the on the funkiness and that really kind of big middle um, that that it had, but. It was a very interesting beer. I enjoyed it quite a lot, and I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for bottles of those. Um, so that was Sky City Pilsner by Via Beer. The Berry Noir, or Juice Box, as I'll call it, by Boulevard Brewing. And the Nelson Hose Dry Hopped Wild Ale by Degard Brewing. And I had all those at the Olympia Tap Room today and enjoyed them all quite a lot as well as the company of uh, several people discussing horse races. Apparently today was a big important horse race. It was kind of fun to, to listen to them talk about it and learn a little bit more about how that goes on. Anyways, this is Matthew. <laughs> I've been true in the room. I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>